This tutorial will explain how to create your initial unit files. First, we will look at how to generate the initial files, and then we'll use an Excel tool named the Seams Unit File Generator. The tool will help you create blank files that you can begin filling in. Let's first look at a process you might use to create your unit. To start, brainstorm ideas with fellow teachers, your coaches, or other resources to generate unit ideas that are appropriate for the grade level and subject that you teach. Select the best ideas from your list and begin to develop a rough outline of the unit. You might at this point think about how you will implement it in the classroom and write down some of the things you will need. Start working on a list of activities and worksheets that will be necessary to implement the unit. Once you have a draft of the outline, you should analyze it to determine if you will meet your learning objectives. If your objectives are not met, recycle back to the design phase and revise your outline as appropriate. Building the unit involves documenting information in your unit plan, activity, and worksheet documents. This step in the unit creation process is the focal point for this tutorial. Testing your unit should include a review by your coaches or fellow teachers prior to delivering it in the classroom. Once you've taught it, you should reflect on what went well and what could be improved. Notice the creation process is continuous. So keep improving it by more brainstorming, redesigning, etc. Now that you understand the focus of this tutorial, let's start to build our documentation. Before we go on, let's open the unit file generator. To open it, navigate to the desktop and double click on the folder labeled Templates 2016. When you open the Templates 2016 folder, you'll find five files including a unit template, an activity template, a worksheet template, and a poster template. The unit file generator is the last document on the list and can be opened by double clicking on it. You might pause this tutorial now so that you can take a look at the templates 2016 folder, review the folder contents, and open the unit file generator. In order to automate some of the tasks within the unit file generator, a small program or macro was developed. Unfortunately, Windows interprets this macro as a threat and requires you to enable the macro prior to using the workbook. When you open the unit file generator, therefore, you may need to click on Enable Editing and Enable Content near the top of your screen. Once you enable it, you are ready to begin using it. Remember the file naming standard we introduced in the Part 1 tutorial? If not, you may want to go back and review it. The purpose of the unit file generator is to maintain the file naming discipline described there. As noted on a previous slide, there's a folder on your desktop labeled Templates 2016. This folder contains the unit, activity, worksheet, and poster templates. When you enter your data into the unit file generator, it will be converted to the appropriate file names that follow the naming standard. In fact, it will actually create these files for you so that you can spend your time documenting your unit information rather than worrying about how to rename your files. As you navigate to different tabs within the unit file generator, you should be aware of some helpful tools that have been embedded. Zooming in and out on any of the tabs can be accomplished by clicking on the plus or minus signs. Each time you click it will zoom in or out depending on which one you click. This will make it easier to see specific sections more clearly when you zoom in or give you a broader perspective by zooming out. On the upper right hand side of your screen there is a small arrow that looks like the letter V. By clicking on this you can hide the menu also known as the ribbon. By clicking it again it will bring the menu back. The advantage of hiding the menu is it allows more of the worksheet to be displayed. If you need help with something as you work, there are lots of comments buried in a number of cells. Those cells that have help associated with them have a tiny red triangle in the upper right hand corner of the cell. To activate help for a particular cell, simply move your cursor over that cell and a small help box will appear. To close the box, you simply move your cursor over another cell without the red triangle. The unit file generator is divided up into three worksheets. The worksheet tabs are located at the bottom of the page 
and can be selected by clicking on any of them. We will start with the first tab on the left which is labeled Number 1 Unit and Lessons. First of all, notice the color scheme used. The labels at the top of each section are orange. The cell titles on the left hand side and in some cases at the top are a light green color and the cells that are set up for data entry are in yellow. You will enter your data throughout this workbook in the yellow cells. The other cells are protected to prevent accidental modifications. You might begin by entering the unit name in the first yellow cell next to unit name at the top of the worksheet. To enter data, simply click on the cell you want to enter data in and start typing. I will assume you have used Excel before, so it is no different than entering data in any Excel worksheet. A word of advice is to keep your unit name short as it will be used in the title of every document that is created for this unit. If you keep it to 20 characters or less, that would be fine. The lesson titles may be longer as these are not used in the file name, but are actually stored inside of your activity documents. Make these as descriptive as possible. Remember that you must have at least two lessons for your unit. The worksheet is set up to handle at least 20 lessons, but it is not recommended that you use that many. Another feature of the Unit and Lessons tab is the Data Center. The Data Center can be used to view unit examples, erase data, save your current unit, and also restore your saved unit. Before you begin entering data into the workbook, you should investigate the buttons in the Data Center. For example, if you click on the button labeled Example 1, Projectile Motion, it will populate the workbook with data from an actual unit that was developed by one of the teachers in the SEAMS program. There is more data on the second tab labeled Number 2, Activities and Worksheets. Click on this tab at the bottom of the worksheet to see more of the data that has been entered for this unit. To reduce the risk of erasing your work inadvertently, warning messages will appear to let you know that you're about to erase some of your information. Make sure that you read these delete prompts and then answer accordingly. Clicking the Save button will save unit data to a data buffer. Clicking the Restore button will copy the buffer data back to the workbook. If you click the Erase button, all of the information on the first two tabs will be deleted after prompting you to confirm the deletion. Lastly, there is information in the center of the data center that indicates what is currently saved in the data buffer. You might pause this video now and click on the buttons to see what they do. Before we move on to the second tab in the workbook, here are some tips for filling out the first tab. The first tip is to focus on filling in the yellow cells. If you're not sure what goes in the cell, place your cursor over the cell and a help box will appear. Most cells have help for the cell or there is help in the header at the top of the column. When you create your lesson titles, be descriptive. These titles help to segregate your activities and will be included in your activity documents. There are no lesson documents created by the unit file generator as a means of reducing the amount of documentation that you need to create. Remember that you will develop at least two lessons per unit, and if you want to see examples of units built by previous SEAMS teachers, explore the data center as noted on the previous slide. Now let's review the second worksheet. You can do this by clicking on the tab at the bottom of the worksheet labeled Number 2, Activities and Worksheets. This slide shows the data from Example 1 in the data center so that you can see what the worksheet looks like when it is filled in. Once again, you will focus on filling in the yellow cells. The orange and green cells are protected and therefore uneditable. The purpose of this worksheet is to generate the file names for each of the activities and worksheets. The file names are located on the right hand side and are generated from the data that you enter. The file name column is not an editable column but you can change the file name by changing some of the information that you enter. You may look at this sheet and be a bit overwhelmed by the amount of information that is required. Keep in mind that prior to using the unit file generator, you should design your unit and create an outline. Your outline 
should contain enough details that will permit you to fill in this sheet without too much difficulty. We will go into more details on the next slide. Here is the top portion of the Activities and Worksheets tab to help illustrate what information you will need to enter. If you entered a unit name and unit number on the first tab, the unit plan row, that is the first row beneath the headings, will be filled in. The first column to the left, the unit number, is also filled. Again, none of the information in the green cells is editable. The format of the unit plan name is fixed in that the lesson number is always zero, the activity number is always zero, and the file content descriptor is always labeled unit plan. The title is the unit name you entered on the first tab. The last column on the right illustrates the resulting file name from the entered and fixed information. Beginning with the first yellow cell in the next row, you will enter the first lesson number. For the first lesson, you should enter the number one. Remember, you will need at least two lessons for your unit. In the activity number column, you will enter an activity number starting with the number one. Generally, the activity numbers are unique. That is, they are numbered from one to n, where n is the total number of activities per unit. Since you may have worksheets attached to the activities, you should repeat that activity number for the associated worksheet. Worksheets are labeled with letters from A to Z. If you need more than 26 worksheets, you should start with AA, then AB, etc. In the file content descriptor column, add a very brief description of what is in the file. This should be brief as it will become part of the file name. The title column is used to input the title of the activity. Use this column to describe the contents of the file. It is not part of the file name, but will be included in the activity document that is generated. As described earlier, the last column shows the file name generated from the entered information. Some tips on filling out the activities and worksheets tab include the following. When you enter a letter in the worksheet letter column, it causes the unit file generator to create a blank worksheet document as shown here. Information entered in the title column will appear in the header of the worksheet document. This header information is to remind you of what goes in the worksheet, so be specific when you fill in the title column. There is no need to enter all of the, your activities and worksheets in the correct order the first time through. Use the sort button to reorder the files by their file name at any time. If the file names don't sort in the correct order, Consider changing some of the input information in the yellow cells and then resort the list. If you'd like to delete an activity or worksheet, select the text in the yellow cells that you would like to delete and then press the delete key. Next, click the sort button at the top right hand side of the sheet. This will move the empty cells to the bottom of your list. To add another activity or worksheet, enter the data at the bottom of the sheet in the yellow cells then click on the sort button. This will place the activity or worksheet in alphabetic order by file name. On occasion you may want to insert an activity or worksheet between existing documents. Again enter your data at the bottom then click sort. You must then renumber or re-letter the documents to get them to sort in the right order. Remember that you want the unit plan at the top of your list followed by lesson one and its associated activities and worksheets. This would be followed by Lesson 2 and its associated activities and worksheets. A word of caution, do not use any of the characters listed in this table in the File Content Descriptor column, column E. The File Content Descriptor is used as part of the file name, therefore inserting one of these characters creates an invalid file name. Once you've input the unit, lesson, activity, and worksheet information, you're ready to generate your unit files. This step is pretty simple, but it is important that you close all Word documents prior to initiating this step. If Word documents remain open, it may block the unit file generator from running. Remember to save your work prior to closing any Word documents. On the Activities and Worksheets tab, make sure the files are sorted in order by clicking the Sort button. Verify the files are in the correct order 
and that you have included all of the files you would like to generate. Then click the Create button. When the file generator begins creating your files, the Word icon will appear on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen. If you click on this icon, you can watch as the files are generated. When the files generation is complete, click on the Excel icon on the taskbar. When you click on the Excel icon, you will see a dialog box that contains information about your files. Beneath the newly created folder label, you will find the name of the folder that contains your files. This folder name contains the unit number, the unit name, the creation date, and the creation time. Notice that you will find this folder in the Unit Archive folder on your desktop. The dialog box also contains the names of your files that are generated. These are listed under the label Newly Created Files. Once you have reviewed this information, you can either click on the Done button to close the dialog box or leave it open and navigate to the desktop. Once you're at your desktop, double click the Unit Archive folder to open it up. Inside of this folder, there may be many folders depending on how many times you've clicked the Create button. Select one of the folders in the Unit Archive folder and double click it. This is where the files are located that were generated when you clicked the Create button. Note that every time you click the Create button on the Activities and Worksheets tab, a new folder is created in the Unit Archive folder. Over time, more and more folders may accumulate, so you might consider deleting those that are not needed once you've saved your good copies. Your finished documents will contain header information that you entered on the first and second tabs in the unit file generator. Review this header information to affirm that is what you expected and then if you are satisfied, you can start to populate your documents and th with those great unit ideas. Before you begin populating your files, it is recommended that you create a working copy in the Windows Documents folder. This will make the files easier to back up to another device such as a memory stick or external hard drive. Once you've copied them, you can begin using these copied files as your working copies. To make a copy, navigate to your desktop and double click on the Unit Archive folder. Right click on the folder that you would like to make a copy of. A dialog box will appear. Hover your cursor over Send To on this dialog box. When the next dialog box opens, click Documents. This will copy the selected folder to the Documents folder, which can be accessed by using Windows Explorer. Once you've created your working files, you can find them by opening up Windows Explorer. To do that, double click on the folder icon on the taskbar. On the left hand side of the screen, look for the Libraries folder and double click on Documents. If you have a lot of folders or files in the Documents folder, you may have to scroll up or down to find the folder containing your documents. A word of advice. As you begin to populate your unit files, remember to back them up periodically. Disk drive failure is not all that uncommon, and once it happens, you may have to start over. If the Windows Documents folder is not too large, you may be able to copy that entire folder to a memory stick. As you create more and more material, you may need to invest in an external hard drive to create your backups. Whatever solution you use, remember to back up at least weekly. That may save you a lot of grief in the long run. This concludes part two of this tutorial. Hopefully, you feel comfortable generating the initial files for your unit. Feel free to run through the file generation process more than once to get the hang of it. Remember that each time you click the Create button, a new set of files is created in the Unit Archive folder on your desktop. By using the Unit File Generator, you have organized your files in a hierarchical manner, making it easier for your stakeholders to find them. So get to work. Now that you have created the files, start populating them. Our next tutorial, Part 3, will illustrate how to add existing documents to your unit show you how to insert additional files and a variety of other topics. If questions should arise about your unit content, please feel free to contact your assigned SEAMS coach. For technical questions about the unit file generator, please contact me, 
Jack Boring using the contact information noted here. You might also let me know of any improvements that you would like to see for this tutorial or the unit file generator. Best wishes as you develop your unit materials.